Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cork in the North podcast. Do appreciate everybody, as always, people who are supporting us in the podcast game during these difficult times as in this oversaturated environment um, that is male podcasting. Um, we are struggling through, though, and we are getting there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank everybody who has signed up to the Patreon as well. Remember, the tour tickets go to the patrons first. Then it goes to the mailing list and then it goes to the rest of the people if they're interested. OK, so please do be signing up, supporting the podcast to get us to financial freedom um, that we need. Uh, also, as well, as you know, who sponsors this podcast is the Doyen Pub, the Doyen Pub on the Lisburn Road. They're fans of us and we're fans of them. A great place to go for food. They have tables, they have chairs, they have salt, they have pepper, they have drinks on tap, they have heating. They have, the, the walls are painted. The disabled toilet available if you need it, right? They have higher place out for events you can get coffee there staff will serve you not 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 sure about the smile but you'll you'll be there they'll be there right and they're hard working people you can get 25 percent off your food if you use the code cork 25 from wednesday to saturday right so bring the family down bring the friends down you wake up on a saturday morning you go we've not been to the dying pub we can get 25 percent off our, our 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 food you go get get the fucking car mate we're going Lisburn Road down down there. Loads of parking as well. It's free as well. Right, so go down to the Dying Pub. All the links are below here. Check it all out. Good man and woman. Or or whatever whatever it whatever it is. Yar. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Cork in the North Podcast. Joining me this week is a man I'm actually a big fan of, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I kind of did comedy, I became very aware of this man. And uh, he's up in the north performing. Uh, at the Empire Comedy Club but not only that he's on tour as well later uh, in, a, in a couple of months he's going to be performing um, in Belfast as well and we decided we'd get him on he's a man of many talents he's a comedian he's an actor he's a painter he's a father he's um, a, he gets public transport uh, his name is Kevin McGarren Kevin Andrew that was I could listen to you talk about me Hours. It's cool. Good to see you, good. and it's <laughs> nice to properly get to know you as well. Good to see you too, man. Because I, I, we obviously we've we, we're like, we've been like passing ships ships in our yeah. in our careers. Yeah, usually we know at, of each other usually at comedy festivals. Yeah, well, like well, 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 yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Did you see my set at all? No. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. That dreaded question. Were you what? watching me? Did you? <laughs> I actually. Oh, did you? I did. I, I cut was... the last minute. It was great. I heard that the uh, re audience reaction was brilliant. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tough crowd, were not it? Tough crowd. <laughs> like, it's such some comics, man. The bullshit, like yeah, it's 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 brilliant. Do you I know, I try to not, I try to not bullshit. Yeah. Do you? Well, do you, you know what I game? did? Do you I game? when I was at Edinburgh one year, you know, if you do Edinburgh, right? You're like, oh, I must come and see your show, and I'm like, no, sorry, man, solo, can't do it. How are you, you at know? bullshitting? Like, it's in our nature to downplay everything. Yeah, it's just ingrained the way our parents have brought us yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Never look cocky. Never yeah. boast. But like we're in a business where you actually have to do the opposite. How yeah. are you with that shit? It's like I apologize about it before I do it. Like it's, I'm really sorry, but like you know I've got I'm actually this doing show. Quite well, you know what I mean. Like, you know what I mean. Like you know, like no, but like it is. It is a. It doesn't suit me. Yeah. Sometimes to push things. Like I'll give you an example. I was at the Edinburgh Festival one year, and uh, somebody said to me, Andrew, you know what? You need to lick a bit more arse in this industry. And when they told me that, I decided to deliberately not lick any more arse yeah i was like that's not my vibe like for example i was in a bar and they said to me the comedy editor of the scottish hurled is oh, the newspaper is over there at the bar will you go over there and buy her a drink and i went no 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 i'm like i don't <laughs> have it in my nature yeah to and do plus that. you'd like you'd like to get by in your own steam you'd like them to come to you and buy you a drink yeah that's what you want to strive for yeah 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 um and i'm not i'm not an arse licker and i also don't uh, I suppose I'm getting better with the old promotion of stuff like please sign up to this if you're interested yeah. uh, in brackets sorry about that, sorry about that. close brackets sorry about that. Like, you, know, you know like that kind of thing like, I mean, like you know uh, it's, it's you know mad, like that kind of thing like you know? they're mad because I'm you always think about like what are the lads from home going to think about this but you uh, can't you no. cannot think about the lads from home oh Kevin and I'm sure you've had this with the amount of people that have come to see me in Cork just for a look Fucking like I love Cork and I love Just Cork. for a look. I love Cork and I love the Cork people and obviously so do ye. Uh you love each other. Um and you love talking about Cork. I like Cork people love talking about Cork. But Cork people are strange. Yeah. Uh, I remember doing a gig in City Limits years ago 
and for some reason it was me and a couple other comics and the first act struggled right like he wasn't great and um i think ross brown was on and he killed it because he was talking about fucking cork for 40 minutes come on ross and and, uh, (laughs) we were outside having a smoke (laughs) after the gig and everyone came out and everyone just gave us a review yeah like 200 people gave us a review of the show and this owlin came up and she was like uh said to me she was like oh yeah you know you were you were good enough like you were good enough ross you were brilliant you were brilliant and then the other lad, you you weren't good. I didn't think you were good tonight. I don't think you should do this anymore. <laughs> and I was like, why the fuck yeah. did you say that to somebody? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how it happens. I I remember doing my first ever gig. Like I had a different experience when I came to Belfast. The first ever time I did a gig at the Empire, I was very green, right? I was doing like the opening twenty minutes, very yeah. nervous, very green. You heard all this notorious stuff about the Empire, which completely changed now. I know you're up here to perform on it now, and it's very relaxed, very calm, full of. Full of, full of calmness now. You'll have a lovely gig tonight. I'll be very Love calm. Very, very, very quiet there. But I did the gig anyway and I, it went okay. Yeah. Went to the bar for a pint. Very excited just, just to be in Belfast. I was living in England. Flew over for a... And this guy just come up to you and went, you're on stage, eh? And I just went, yeah, yeah. Just about. And I just walked out. He just said, just about. I was like, just about fucking what? <laughs> you like, just got away with it. like. Just about got away with the game. Yeah, like, I'm know? not going to leave a bad review. You, uh, when I was, uh, I would have been a big fan of the TV show the, when, you, when you hosted it uh, for a couple of, did you host it for two series or a couple of I series? I did, f- I did five years, I did ten. I but did. you were in it for, but when did you become the host? Wasn't there someone else hosting it before you? Dermot Whelan yeah, was Dermot on. Yeah, Dermot Whelan was I think I did five years and we used to do two seasons a year. So I think I did fucking ten seasons. Right. Okay, so Republic of Telly, yeah. which was a great TV show that was mm-hmm. an RT, a comedy show. Lots of people from comedy you will probably know now, you know, like Fred Cook and Bernard and yourselves and uh, Jennifer yeah, yeah. Um, and stuff like that. And I used to love it. And what I love about it now is the amount of times I'm seeing it on TikTok. Yeah. Like there's stuff like that. Like the, there was one there with the Fred Cook and he's in the restaurant and he's like, he sings to you one next to him and all this kind of stuff. All these little sketches, you know? Was that, yeah, because there was a lot of sketches <coughs> that, and I suppose at the time they were written um, to be clickbaity stuff like you know your Irish when yeah. or every Irish wedding ever and that's basically what every, 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 every Irish funeral, funeral ever every yeah. Irish blank ever and that's what does serious numbers on TikTok now <laughs> you were yeah. ahead of the game we were way ahead of the You're, game they, they, but even though at the time we were like oh, you, they created the algorithm yeah it was a lot of crack like, like I was very disappointed when it was when it was uh, cancelled. Obviously, I'm yeah. sure you guys were as well. But but like my 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 because you had an office in there in RT, didn't you? We did. Was yeah. it like a job, like a nine to five job for you? Yeah. Was, How did it work? Because well, I mean, it was like you know you'd roll in around ten or you know we, they weren't that strict. There was no punch card. Um, yeah. Once yeah. the show was done, you just do what you want. Yeah, kind of. Well, I mean, I, they were more relaxed than me, but um, yeah. So it was it was odd because. Because we'd no budget, like we'd have to film stuff around RT offices and we just pissed off everybody. Really? Yeah, because like they're trying to fucking edit Work. some uh, religious program and we're doing a sketch about fucking wanking or something <laughs> and within the earshot and we're roaring. And there was a few times like we got given out to for just here, lads, <laughs> this is not a fucking studio. There's a workspace. And we're like, we don't have the budget. We have to shoot it here. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, because there was one there, didn't you, do it with uh, Bernard and was it Sheila, one of the Shogas? Sheila Shogas. And were, she was obsessed yeah. with the Shoga or something like that. Like, and I did one where I, it was kind of like Dances with Wolves, but about the Irish language, where I was in love with Sheila Shoga. Oh, right. She, it was like, you know, a, a, a white dude falling in love with Native American kind of thing. Yeah. Um, She taught me the word for penis was the wood. The, the wood? Uh, yeah. The but, wood. How do you say it? The wood. The, the wood. Yeah. Do you, do you put a V in it? Yeah, sort of. The wood. The wood. Anyway, the wood. Um, so like yeah, w. they were they were good old, they were good crack, and like we we partied hard. Like we'd film on a Sunday, and um, it was probably at my peak drinking, so I'd bring everybody to Fibbers after. You know, Fibbers. It's kind of like yeah. a, it's a dive rock bar no. in Dublin. Uh, it's just like it's like going back into the nineties, but um. So we'd, we'd, we'd like the brogue in Cork or something. So yeah, so like, like you'd, Fred you'd, Zappel. Be, you'd be bringing Fred Zeppelin's. yeah, it's like Fred yeah. Zeppelin's. So you'd be like bringing Sheila Shoga to like the dirtiest pub in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> the one of the cleanest women in Ireland. Yeah. The one of the dirtiest pubs in but, Dublin. Uh, I remember after one of the um, after one of the uh, rap parties. So we're still in RT at this stage. We haven't even made it to the pub, and there was a, a lad working a producer working on the show, 
who was off the booze. He wasn't eating meat. He wasn't eating dairy. He was a health fanatic. Had the wife a, left or something? There wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't a pick in this lad. And he was drinking wine. And he got ossified. Like, he got, like, snarly drunk, you know? So we're like, we have to get this lad home. I was like, I'm not fucking bringing him home. So my mate, Jeremy, who worked in the show, said, I'll take the bullet. I'll get into the taxi. Your man was just giving him dog's abuse. And at this stage, he had already gotten sick on the floor. And I remember grabbing like pint glasses and putting underneath them like he was like a busted car, <laughs> just trying to catch flowing Jesus oil. Christ. And uh, so they rang him, they rang the taxi and um, he's like, yeah, listen, I don't know where this lad lives, but here's his number. Do you have his address? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we got an address. He's rang here before. So he gets in the cab with him, drives out the house. The house is massive, big gates to it. And he's like, this lad's like 29. There's no way he... He's earning that money. Like. Yeah, yeah. Rings the doorbell. Fucking Eamon Dunphy comes out. <laughs> because he had worked on the sports show, he had called the taxi for Eamon Dunphy countless times. And, and <laughs> my mate's here holding this drunk going like, how are you Eamon now? Does this lad live here? <laughs> Dunphy's like, get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? Yeah, what? yeah. But uh, Dunphy understood. As you, well, as you'd Dunphy's a bit of a party. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's a disgrace. Take the child away. Take him away. <laughs> that, so when you were working in RT, like obviously you've, I mean, I mean, you've seen what's happened recently with RT and stuff yeah, like that in the news and stuff. Highly like, entertaining. Like, what's your relationship now with them? Just for the odd show here and there, whatever you do, or like, 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 like. I'm very little. Uh, like occasionally, like, um, like I was always a freelancer, so I was yeah. never uh, staff. So like occasionally, you know, a production company would come to you and say, do you want to do a show or something like that? But no, I haven't been in that place in yonks. But when it ended, did you know it was coming? Did you get... No, like, like they were always very bad. They were like a bad boyfriend. Like they'd sort of, um, you'd sort of like, well, what are we doing next week? And you never knew when the show was coming back. Every single season. Like when I started, they said you're actually only in, you're going to probably be in for a year because we're probably going to shut this show down in a year. So you're like, all right. So you're never, you never felt safe on it. And every single season, they're like, it's not coming back. And it would come back every single time. Why is that? Is that because they're working so tight to budget that they can't? <sighs> they, I don't know. They just seem, <laughs> it just seem fairly unorganized. Yeah. If you could believe that. No, it um, seems like a very well-run organization that has <laughs> clearly has its, uh, all its finances involved. <laughs> And the chief financial officer, I remember him in the in the in the meeting where he went, yeah. "What's your salary?" He went, "I don't know, two hundred and fifty." I, I love didn't even that. Know. It 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 goes down in the long line of uh, Irish men in suits giving crazy answers. Yeah, like Bertie Ahern saying, "I yeah. don't have a bank account." Yeah, <laughs> Minister for Finance didn't have a bank account. Um, like, yeah, can I just mad. say, like, that is the most like the RTE scandal and that. All those questions on when they did the Oireachtas Committee and stuff like that. I'm sitting there going, this is exactly Ireland. Yeah. This is exact. This is actually, if this happened in the Celtic Tiger, you were like, this, guy, this is perfectly normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was real the, Celtic Tiger. It was real Celtic Tiger behaviour. Like I had a bit of my stand up just about how bizarre it was to like, like we're all reading this stuff and watching this stuff and it was making us so mad. All the serious amount of money, like 2.5 million on a toy show musical or 15 grand on the sandal scandal um, and all this stuff. But you're you're reading about it like on the RTE website. website yeah. It's like the equivalent of coming home to your wife and just being like, here, sit down. I've got more fucking news from me. <laughs> You'll never guess <laughs> what I've done. You'll never guess what I've done now. <laughs> you know the way we're supposed to be putting away 500 quid a month? Apparently, I've been giving it some lassie in Belfast and OnlyFans. It's an <laughs> absolute <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> I am raging with myself. I'm. Ra you have every right to be angry because I'm fuming. I don't know if I'll ever be able to put trust in myself again. <laughs> anyway, what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But like when you were in there and they told you at Republic of Telly that you had no money. Yeah, yeah. And you're then watching all this stuff unfold. Yeah, no, you're thinking to yourself, like, where is the actual investment in grassroots talent? And Oh, see, the, and that was the annoying thing is like they, because the way it, the frustrating thing about television, I suppose politics is kind of the same. Yeah. A new lad will come in and he wants to make a stamp. So he starts like just cutting things out. I've no, I didn't make this, get rid of it. I, I want to make this instead. And then. It's like a football manager. Yeah. When they come in, they're not my players. I don't want these players. So yeah. I need to get rid of a load of players. And then the new ones comes in. And by the time he gets the team gelled, 
the team is still failing, so he gets sacked, and the next manager comes in. It's, it's constant yeah, chop yeah. and change. So that was it. Like we were, I think we were replaced with like a Pudge and Raj chat show, and then it lasted like one season, and then nothing replaced. I wouldn't mind, like I wouldn't mind if they replaced us with like another comedy show with a fucking young comedian or something. But um, I just like to see, you know, Irish comedy on the telly. You know, yeah, because it was a re like I mean, there was times like before, don't you know, the Republic of Telly when you had like the Don't Feed the Gondolas. The panel, you know, it came in that sort of. And they were long like, line I've heard, of, I've heard stories about the panel, and they were like rock stars. That's when people are still watching telly, and there'd be a hundred teenagers outside the venue, like they yeah. were the fucking Beatles, you know, screaming for Andrew Stanley, you know. Uh, I heard a story about the uh, panel. Do you remember Craig Doyle was hosting it for a while? Yeah. For anyone who doesn't remember, He's, he does a bit of gardening and sports presenting. He does he? everything. So Craig, Craig Doyle, Doyle, Craig Doyle was a a TV presenter that was left on the steps of RT as a baby, <laughs> and uh, with a little note saying, "Please, please give this boy as many shows as possible." And um, they gave him a rake of shows, but he was the host of the panel, and God love him, like he's probably a lovely lad. He comes across like a Labrador. Yeah, like I saw him. Lovely. The, I saw him in the Aer Lingus Lounge at Heathrow. Yeah, and the way he went up for his food was very relaxed. Yeah, he's so relaxed. Soft. He just says, Chinos. like he's always been good looking. I'd say. Yeah. Um, Ooze is confident. Good at sport. Um, girls love him. Um, but you know, a Labrador. You wouldn't want a Labrador hosting a television program. Yeah. Um, no bite to him. Though. But no bite. But he was he was host of the episode and he fell off the chair and it got a huge laugh. And he was like, oh, shit, oh, whoa, oh, that worked out quite well. And then the next week, he tried it again. Oh. <laughs> and uh, tried they, too they hard didn't laugh. He's like, yeah, you can't you can't fall off a chair every episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's that's just something like a comic will know. Yeah, this is awful, but this is only a one time thing. Like. There's nothing worse than, you know, when you say a joke, <clears throat> you know, when you say a joke off the cuff at a gig and it gets the biggest yeah. laugh and you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to write that down and do it again. Doesn't work as well yeah. the next time. I, I said that. I said this one. I used to go with a Spanish girl, and I wanted to break up with her, so I broke up with her between twelve and three, because I thought she wouldn't have enough energy to argue back. The siestas, <laughs> oh, right? The old siesta joke. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had, like, I'd lived a little bit of it. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'll put that into an actual bit now. It's never worked. Never worked. It's yeah. too predictable. It was too, you know, that kind of thing. And um, when you left, when you left the Republic of Telly, obviously stand up was always like because you went to the UK for uni, didn't you? Yeah. So you you went to Birmingham. Yeah, just outside of Birmingham, yeah. Wolverhampton, Wolf, Wolverhampton yeah. yeah. That's a strange place to go to university. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't have much choice. I, I didn't do great in the Leaving Cert, you despite, did, um, despite you did. cheating. Um, what did you get in the Leaving? I can't remember. I got 180. Did you? What year did you do your Leaving? Do, 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 do. I want to say 2004, maybe. Wow, wow. Um, but so you're proper, like, you're of that generation, like, where, you know, you remember a life without phones. Oh my god! Yeah, you remember a life where you had to go to the payphone. I remember call, yeah, calling girls on the landline. Yeah, girl, and get to get past the dad first. And yeah, stuff like that like, I like the troll. Do you know what I was? We were talking about on the radio this morning. Because what, what, what would you see? What would you see? What if I saw something? What would you see now walking down the street that you would see would be suspicious? I thought someone using a payphone. Yeah, not as a toilet. If yeah, if yeah. I see someone on a payphone, I go, that's suspicious. That's a drug dealer. That's something's yeah. going on there. He's murdering somebody. Yeah, so like 2000... I, I remember. Um, there was. I remember. I shifted a girl when I was about 13 or 14. Go on, I met her in a nightclub. Go on, go on. And, oh, this is not a sexy story. Don't worry. 14? Um, I was about 13 or 14. Is this a junior disco? Yeah. Right. So shifted a girl. Shifted her for 45 minutes. So straight. I got locked jaw like. Um, <laughs> didn't, she wasn't letting me go anywhere else. So I just kept the shift Just going. on the back? Yeah. Just sort of cup, cup the back. Um, and then I was like, after I was like, I think I'm actually in love with that person that I didn't speak to at all. <laughs> For 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I tracked her down and um, I tracked her down on the, the Breffney Blue magazine, which was like an annual, a football annual for the Ca Cavan football annual. Yeah. Found her under 16, Butler's Bridge. That's her. So I rang some female friends of mine who played football. They were like, do you know her? Did some proper like stalking. research. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> research slash stalking. Fair enough. Yeah. That's a crime today. That's, you know that? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Got her name, <laughs> got her number, and like so, I wrote out all what I was gonna say on these post-it notes. I was gonna invite her to the cinema, and so I put the post-it notes on the phone. I was like building up to this, and I, I get the phone, I ring her, and I remember like 
It's like, she's going to say this and then I'll say this. I'd written like dialogue. But then she went off script, obviously, and she was so fucking relaxed. Like, and it totally threw me how relaxed she was and how nervous I was. So I invited her to the cinema. We went to see um, The Others with Nicole Kidman. And um, my mate Darren went to me. He brought a girl. Double dating. And, uh, double dating. Fucking and, uh, 14. Double dating. Darren's brother Anthony drove us with his mad friend. Drove us into <laughs> Cinema Cavern. So uh, we get to cinema. I sit down with you on. And I'm like, I'll wait half an hour before I make a move. It's too eager otherwise. So I wait a half an hour and I got to lean in. And then the other fella starts shifting the other girl. Can't do it now. It looks like I'm copying him. I don't oh. want to look like I'm that weak. I'll wait another 20 minutes. Wait another 20 minutes. Got in shift. Nicole Kidman takes off her fucking negligee. She's wearing like jammies underneath. And I was like, <laughs> I don't look like I'm getting the horn from Nicole Kidman. <laughs> and I need to just relieve it. So I'll wait another 20 minutes. And then I was like, the film's over in 50 minutes. I've, I've missed it. I've missed it. And we just held hands. Oh. And it was, never saw her again. Anthony drove us home. Halfway home, we're driving through like just countryside. His mate goes here. And Anthony's like, yeah, here's good. So his mate gets out. And I was like, what's going on? Your man takes a tire out of the back of the car, ties it to the tow bar, sits into it. And Anthony drives down the road, dragging him like a sort of a tarmac based water sport. <laughs> In the wheel, he's sitting in the wheel. Sitting like in that. the wheel as as you're driving down these country roads, flying it. For having the crack. Yeah. And then uh, I remember like he was like, he, he did something where he stood, opened the door, held his hands on the door with his feet, big work boots on the ground, on the tarmac. And Anthony drove and he skied until his feet got hot. So that, sadly, was the most memorable part of the night. <laughs> <laughs> fucking culture. Things you fucking do in Cavan, like. Yeah. I um, always thought Cavan and Leitrim should merge as one. I don't know, would we vote on that? Do you know what I mean? It's too, it is. We're very similar, yeah. yeah. There's madness. Cav Bo border, all those like, border counties are mad. Should merge, just be one. Yeah. We've Better along. chances in the All Ireland. What's that? Better chances in the All Ireland. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Do you know? But when you, uh, you're married now, obviously, yeah. with kids and stuff like that, you never, you, first of all, you never saw her again, ever again. No. Never. Even never today, have you ever to typed her. her into Facebook? I wouldn't know what her name is. Don't know. I have no memory of it. I need to get out the Breffney Blue 2003 or 4. Like, but it's mad to think, like, when you are, like, I remember going to junior discos when I was 14, and you'd be like, going, go up there and ask her for me there, will you? Yeah. And you go, will you go? And you go, mm -hmm. you stop See, them. I always brought her along another lad. I never wanted to say, you ask her for me. I just felt that was weak. I wanted to be the asker. So I'd bring around my mate, who's slightly less better looking. And then I'd ask for him. She'd say no. And then I'd make a few jokes. And then you're in the conversation there. And that was a good tactic. Yeah. So, so, that so was apologies to anyone listening to this. So I used to bring around to nightclubs. <laughs> you're like, you never see two good looking best friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, why, so you, when you went to Woolwich, you did, uh, what's it, is it animation? Animation, yeah. Right. I wanted to be fucking cartoonist. You want to be a cartoonist. But when did the when did the comedy book hit you? It was around that time. I remember, like, I was friends with Robbie Bonham. You know Robbie Bonham? Robbie, how is he? He's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's gigging away. Um, so we you did... You used to do the Rolo joke. Remember, the, he used to do my last Rolo. Oh, he used yeah, to do the yeah. Rolo joke. Do you remember that? He used to always, I said to him, you yeah. always have to have a bag of, a pack of Rolos yeah. every time you do a gig. <laughs> Yeah, there's always a thing like if you have a prop for a joke, oh. the panic. I'd say you have nightmares about like, oh. I'm doing a gig for the fucking royal family. In I was gigging with Paul Curry recently in the Netherlands. Two suitcases, two 20k oh suitcases. I was That's like, why? Just write a fucking act. <laughs> <laughs> just, just write words. You don't need fucking, just write, why would you have that stress? Yeah, that's too much. I remember at the start, I had like, um, literally when I was just starting off, I had like a ghetto blaster with a CD of songs, but I couldn't play an instrument. So it was me. It was, I recorded myself going and it just came across as demented. Um, but I was, I was doing a gig um, at the Kilkenny Fringe in a pub that was barely booked. Yeah. And there was lads watching a match and I had to put the volume up so loud that it made the CD skip. And I was like, I'm never, I'm never having props again. Yeah. It's off. I, I like. It's I have a lot so of respect stressful. for people that do it. Yeah, yeah. And they, there's a guy in England called George Egg. I don't know if you've heard of him. 
but he so he, he used he, he would stay in a hotel and he would cook a three course meal using an iron and an ironing board and oh my god if you ever hear about that guy George yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. but he has massive props yeah so he's like he's certain gigs he just can't do wow because he can't get to, he can't get to the venue he can't get on a train or yeah like, yeah and I'm just like oh just, just change the act man. change the fucking act you have know? a little notebook yeah um, would well, you yeah, sorry so yeah so Robbie was doing comedy yeah I met him in animation and I used to ask loads of questions. Because he was a character. He loved drawing. He, he loved drawing as yeah. well, yeah. And I used to ask loads of questions and he would just be like, just do it. Just just do a gig. And I was like, really? You can just go up and try it? Yeah. And that was it. Well, how would your first gig go? First gig was good because, I mean, everyone else was shite on the night. Open spot. Like <laughs> it was an open thing. spot So you job. got the bug then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, the Hapenny Bridge Inn. Oh, yeah, I've done it. So... Uh, the Hapenny Bridge runs an open mic and you win. It's like the Lucky Duck Award. And the the audience picks yeah. the best act. It's like and a gong I, I, show. Yeah, so I won three shows in a row, and I was like, "All right, okay, this is good." I am the champion. But like, <laughs> I remember like going up to other clubs, like the inter just going, uh, "Hey, how's it going? Can I get a slot?" I won three rubber ducks there. <laughs> at the Hibini, but you might have heard about it. You might have heard about it in Variety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I've locked you off from snogging women from when I was 14. Where did you live before you moved up here? Where did you live? London. You were London? St. Albans, yeah. And how did you find that? Loved it. Did you? I have a, I have a bit of a, a strange kind of existence, really. Like, like I was born in Westmead. Right. I was born in Athlone. Moved to Cork when I was four. Didn't have a choice over it. <laughs> right. I was brought to Cork in a car. And I was told, this is your home now. Because mommy and daddy have got a job in the hospitals. Stayed in Cork until I was 22. Oh, yeah. Left at 22, not been back. Wow. And I Are you have, still, I you have still, tried to go back. You still have Cork in your heart. Yeah, but I have tried to go back. And I want to go back eventually. Cork is funny, man. I was at a wedding. Um, I was at a wedding a couple of, about a year ago. And I was out having a fag. And this lad came out. And he immediately, he's like, how's it going? Where are you from? I'm from Cork. He didn't even care. He didn't <laughs> care a, where I was from at all. <laughs> I've got and, uh, some great. He just started talking about Cork. Like, he was like a parody of a Cork man. Yeah. He's like, Cork is brilliant. I love Cork. Cork is the best place in the world. I think it could be the best city in the world. And I was like, really? Like, is New York or Cork? Oh, Cork. Yeah, Paris or Cork? Cork. Really, Taiwan, Beijing, uh, San Francisco. Oh, Cork, Cork, Cork. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And I, he was like, you know, once you're from Cork, you just like, it's great. You know, you you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I'm from Cork. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, we're not that different in Ireland. Our culture isn't really that diverse. Surely in Cork, there's divisions. He goes, no, no, geez, no, once you're from Cork, you're from Cork. And if I meet another man from Cork, I'm like, you're my brother because we're both from Cork. <laughs> and I was like, really? And this sounds made up. It's not. Another lad comes out. And he goes, are you talking about Cork? And I says, yeah, yeah, we are, yeah. And he goes, are you from Cork? Yeah, I'm from Cork as well. No way, whereabouts from Cork? I'm in East Cork. And he goes, ah, that's not Cork at all. <laughs> <laughs> Get away, will you? Be a foreigner. That's not Cork. That's not Cork. I wouldn't class these Cork. It was now. fucking hilarious. Yeah, man. Like, you know, they were, it was like I was watching a joke. Yeah. In real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, like, it's something, it's something. But I, when I move, when I go home to Cork now, like, yeah. I fucking. Like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool place. Like, I like, do, like I it, do yeah. love it. Like, and I, I'm a big, I mean, I'm a big advocate for the north as well. Like, I do like the north up here as well, you know. But I try. I've really tried, Kevin, to go home. Mm. I know it sounds real, like it's like I'm a fucking refugee that can't get back. <laughs> like, right? Like, sound like a Zionist. Like, I would love. <laughs> you, know I mean? yeah. you go home. You fucking kick out some lad for living in a house. <laughs> this is my. I was, was promised to me in a book. <laughs> I'm from Cork. You're not from Cork. I want the house. The house is in Cork. Give me the house in Cork. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but like like the thing about this is that like I have tried Occupant, I have Kelsey. tried there's people in Cork living Free in Cork. Cork. <laughs> Free Cork There's people living in Cork that shouldn't be in Cork. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking up too much space. There's plenty of Cork people that are trying to get back to Cork, but we can't get back because of the housing situation. Right? I would love to live in Cork. It's very like Israel. <laughs> in Cork very, yeah, just the way you're describing it like, I wasn't sure if you're still doing a bit about Palestine but <laughs> where do you live? I'm living in Dublin living in Dublin for years yeah you're you're so Kevin Dub you're missing your partner your wife's from Dublin? no she's Longford she's only she's down the road Christ. and you yeah. both choose Kevin Longford and you both choose 
Dublin. Just brought you to Dublin. Yeah. It's it's kind of like if you're not into the GAA, you're just you're an outsider. Really, in, 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 neither in, of us couldn't give a shit about in GAA. certain in most counties, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's um it's the topic of a lot of conversations. Yeah. Did you go to the under 15s last week? No, I fucking no, didn't. I didn't man. Well, was, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's constant, isn't it? Like my nephew now, um, I always talk about him on here. You know, he's in the uh, Cork City Football Academy. He's doing really well, and we're fingers crossed he'll pay the mortgages off. <laughs> but um, like I'm obsessed now with his games yeah. and his fixtures. But I obviously can't go to all the games. But my brother's like, and I realised, but when you get invested in something, I can understand the, co- the people in the communities that get invested into it. It becomes a part of their identity and their culture and a lot of stuff. But then. If you're trying to explain it to a city person, yeah, they're like, "This is just fucking." It's quite religious. Weird. It's like it's extreme. It's, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's like a religious uh, cult. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you're not in it, it seems like why? Why is everyone so mad about this? Yeah, um, I'm. A, I'm but you can all... totally see, like, I mean, like the my brothers, like the captain, of the team, and like they won the last two county finals, and you get wrapped up in it. Like it's like it's like watching a battle, you know. Yeah. But I. I don't know enough about it to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you're on the outside of it. I'm on the outside you're of it. My, I have a brother of mine. Like I would be quite into my sport, uh, just as a obviously a, a viewer, um, armchair supporter. But my brother like would would have been into music as a kid, mm. like in, in loads of bands and stuff like that. And if I said to him, "Oh, did you see the golf at the weekend?" No. Then you go, "Did you see uh, a oh, tip playing Kilkenny there in the hurling?" He was looking at me, going, "Do you know the Camino?" Could take me fourteen days to walk. To, like he'll he'll yeah. he'll be researching about a Chilean fucking industry or a Uruguayan yeah. former president that had an affair in nineteen seventy two. He's in a completely different fucking headspace. Yeah, you know what I mean, like like you could he could be walking past Crow Park on All Ireland Final Day, and he'd be sitting there going, "But why would I go in there? Why? I have no, I have no interest. In yeah, it. yeah. Like it's like if Formula One racing car driving was on outside my house." I would pull the fucking curtains and I complain to the council over the night. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I have no interest in stuff like that. Probably with the speed bumps, it probably wouldn't be ideal. You know. You know? But I wanted to ask you, like, uh, would you say you're a nervous performer, or you get nervous beforehand? And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to say this, yeah. If you don't mind me saying, it, yeah. I once uh, was on at Ivy Gardens and yeah. you were on as well, and I think you were really nervous before mm. you went on. I think you said it to Carl Spain, didn't you? Was it? This was the big tent. Two years was ago, it? yeah. This is the big tent. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I left you alone. Yeah, I left you alone. I said, "Oh, there's Kevin. Oh, I'll leave him alone." Yeah, I, t- I tend to. I go into myself a bit before yeah. bigger gigs. Like that's a that's a big gig yeah. for me. That big tent at the Ivy Gardens, where I'm like, you're supporting somebody like Dylan Moore or something or Tommy, yeah. and you really want to do well because you know they're there. Because you know they're there. Like if I'm doing a small room, I'm not nervous at all. Yeah. Um, but even it, something like the Empire tonight, there's more pressure tonight than say the International Bar. In why do you think that is? Because you're up north. Because I'm up north, I don't do it that often. You're thinking if if I bomb, you know, Jade won't have me back. <laughs> it's not like so that. you know there is there's an element of nervousness to it. But I'm not nervous once I'm up there. No. Do you find uh, coming up here tricky? Like when you're coming up and you get you do gigs in the north, like what's your first impression? So like, oh, I'm going up there, oh fuck, they're all mad up there. Like or no, no, like, no. There's definitely like right. Well, I I have to change my material a bit. So there's certain things like that you can do in Dublin or you can do down south that they just don't really care about. Yeah. Like you know you can't do any Marty Morrissey references yeah. in Belfast. <laughs> but I remember doing a gig. But you, can't, you could in West Belfast, couldn't you, Sean? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Not I East rem- Belfast. I remember doing a gig in the Empire years ago where um, I had written this character of like an American tourist who was in Belfast to connect with his roots or something. And he tells this story about a taxi driver called Paddy who just tortures him. And I can't, and I can't remember. He's basically like, um, I was trying to trigger... I was basically trying to troll the audience. Um, and let me see. So I like said to my driver, Paddy, I was like, I want to see the real Belfast. Um, or I want to dress like a proper Brit now that I'm in the UK. And they were like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Paddy brought me down and he, 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 took, he got me dressed up with like the Union Jack hat and the Union Jack waistcoat and the Union Jack boxers. And he took me to... Uh, he took me to a pub in the Falls Road, 
Uh, the Falls Road is a Catholic yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know, with some guys in the pub, they took exception to what I was wearing. And basically, he gets battered and abused by every group. I remember like, and then we went to, uh, uh, what's the fucking Protestant area? Shankill. Shankill Road. Uh, so I was like, Patty, take me somewhere else. So we went to the Shankill Road. And I noticed there was a lot of graffiti on outside the pub. And Patty said, yeah, sometimes guys like to commemorate their loved ones by doing a little bit of graffiti. And I was like, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, my grandfather's name was Ira. And Patty said, you know, you should write down Ira forever on the wall of that Shankill pub. <laughs> and some, some guys came out and they took exception to what I was. <laughs> and they, they loved, Empire loved when I slagged off the Protestants, but when I slagged off the Catholics, yeah. they were like, fuck yeah. off with that shit. Yeah. So I kind of learned, because I was naively thinking, if you're going up to Belfast, you should be balanced yeah. with your abuse, but it depends on where you fucking are. <laughs> really does, mate. Really does. I I have a, a my girlfriend. Like I I would do gags about her, you know, coming from the British side, but she's one of those where it's like she doesn't give a shit. Like yeah, she's like whatever. Like you know what I mean. But I do have like with, like I have this bit now where I'm working on like she, when she moved in, she took my side of bed, and I I said, well, you can't just automatically take that side of bed. She's like, what's the British in me? Uh, you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like yeah. she didn't actually. She kind of said something like that, but I obviously will change it. But I often feel out like when I'm doing shows up here because I'm like this token southerner that's up here that's living out in the east side predominantly british area yeah like loving it no i've no i'm not really into it mm -hmm. but i understand that people here have a history and a past and it's sensitive to some people whereas a lot of young people are just whatever we're only fuck like but my see i have um i have <clears> just a thing in me that wherever i am i want to i want to try something that could get booze yeah i want to try something that could maybe piss people off but if you do it with enough cheekiness, you kind of get away with, you get it, with the, it. You get the, you get the, smile. the danger. I want to yeah. get it. I want to just I've, skirt I've, the line of of acceptability. Yeah, I have a joke in my new tour show, and I'll tell you what it is because and I say, right, if I'm going to do that joke, I'm going to have to write and I, I take the piss out of the Irish. Yeah, because I go like, oh, in the north, you can be born with two identities. So when you're born, you can be Irish or wrong. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that gets a big laugh, right? Yeah. And then uh, and I go, and if you're sitting there and you're, and you're upset with that joke, can I just say, um, just get an Irish passport, you'll feel great. <laughs> right. You're right. So that's like, yeah. That, so that's, so now I'm thinking to myself, right, if I'm doing that, I should really take the piss out of the Irish. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm yeah. currently right. So need I need balance. to have the balance. Like. Yeah. So I'm then going to do like some sort of self deprecating one to kind of, but then there's like, like if you say, like if you meet somebody who goes, well, I'm, they call it they call themselves mudblood if you're mixed yeah my my dad's irish and my mom's british sure they married or whatever right so you're known as a mudblood mm -hmm. um i said like, oh my, my friend you know he's half irish half british you know i only like half of him uh i i only like the british side because i'm fucking sick of the irish like yeah, you know like yeah. you kind of like you so you, you kind of like have I, to kind of play it like kind of that way a bit. yeah i feel if you don't then you're just playing to the your what is it preaching to the choir yeah like you want you want you want to piss people off a little bit. Oh, and I I, I enjoy winding like I, I you want to wind them up. It's a yeah. wind up. Yeah, I did an ad lib of something that I probably heard and I was completely completely off the cuff in the Netherlands. Mm. And I do a routine about how in Ireland we copy a lot of British formats for the TVs. So I do yeah. this thing about Dragons Den, Irish Dragons Den, was on years ago. Basically, it's like Irish people with ideas, right? And they're sober when they're doing this show, right? Yeah. And I come up with all this stuff. And then I said to the Netherlands people, I said, who are very unemotional people. Sure. Very tall, unemotional, very attractive, mm. incredibly trendy, making up for your lack of personality. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. That was the kind of like, just yeah. I was kind of like going for. And then I said, do you guys here have like the Netherlands Got Talent? And someone said, yeah, just one season. <laughs> right? It was a complete ad lib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think something in my head, but it was completely off the, off the, the beaten track. And then they kind of looked at me and some people got it, and I just went. Well, well yeah, but you, you know, like you, you could argue that that's inherent to Irish humor, is to like the the quickest way you can ingratiate yourself with somebody is to take the piss out of them. Yeah, the quickest way, like as soon as somebody starts taking the piss out of me, I immediately like them. Yeah, like you we're not, you're, you're comfortable with comedians around comedians. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I'm like the most comfortable than any group of people. Yeah, I'm going to name drop here now, if you don't mind. Go on. Boom, Ed Byrne. Sure. Properly hung out with him for the first time. Mm. And we had a chat about this, about 
finding your tribe, right? Yeah. And I've met Ed a couple of times before, you know, like, um, and stuff like that. Like, and we have a lot of mutual friends and stuff like that from one of my time living in England and stuff. And uh, really great guy to hang out with. I'm sure you know him. Like, yeah. The great guy to hang out with. Great fun and all this kind of stuff. And he, we were talking about, he said to me, he said, he said to me, I find it very difficult to hang out with people who are not comedians. I was going to say the same thing. Right? I'm a lot more nervous at weddings, yeah. at, you know, outside the school gates. Because you would get recognized <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> nah, not, not that often. No. But um, normal conversation uh, scares the shit out of me. Yeah. If I'm with a comedian, I know, I know I'm grand. You know, know exactly where you can go. I know it. that you can, even if you say a joke, that doesn't work or if it's slightly offensive you can just move on they'll forgive you for it yeah whereas if you say the wrong thing to a normal person like you're kind of ruined in their eyes you know yeah i've had i've had especially things at school gates where i've met other parents and i've said some and my wife is just like why the fuck did you say that and i was like i thought it'd be funny <laughs> i thought you were making an e- i thought you were making an enoch burke joke there <laughs> 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 me and Enoch what's the crack Enoch <laughs> show me your prison tats uh, well like there was a joke I did the last time it's not even a joke it's just pure winding up the audience when I was in Belfast and I was talking about how I'm not famous enough to be claimed by the Brits but I would like I don't want to be British but I'd like them to want me you know like Barry like Killian Keown, Murphy or something Barry Keown Killian Murphy Saoirse Ronan all these amazing actors um, being claimed as like British actors and it drives us up the fucking wall. I was like, like they never do it for politicians. Like you never hear them say, UK politician Jerry Adams. And, <laughs> t- and technically, <laughs> tec- technically. Yeah. And the audience fucking go mad. They just like start <laughs> throwing shit at the stage. <laughs> now he'd never admit it himself, you know, unless he had a few pints in him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, or like UK fighter Conor McGregor, like, yeah, you can have yeah, that no, one. You can yeah, have take yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, take no, that one. Yeah, yeah, you can take that one. Like, yeah, he, he was born in Sutton or something. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> when well, well, I was talking to Ed about this, I, he said to me, he said to me, like, something about, how do you feel around comedians? And I said, you know what? I said, I have a strange relationship with comedians. I said, yeah. like, I love comedy and I love comedians. And if you asked me, who do you want to go for a pint with? I'd be like, I want to go for a pint with comedians. Mm. But I also, I think I need to have people away from comedy as well that I could like yeah. go for dinner with or you know, yeah. you and the wife go out with a couple of friends and double date for a meal on a Saturday night and kids have that's Well, that's night. friends. Yeah, like, I can do that, right? But if I went into a pub on a Saturday night and like I was with another comedian and then three lads came over and started talking to you, all I'm thinking is, oh, when he finishes now this sentence, I think I can get away to that corner. Yeah. It's like, I'll... I'd be polite. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Cool. Lovely. Oh, it's mad, mad weather, isn't it? Anyway, listen, have a, ha- have a great night. Yeah. I always say to when you want to get rid of something, have a great night. Yeah. So I, you know that's the end of the I'm conversation. A big, um, I'm a big fan of cigarettes because cigarette is like an egg timer for a conversation. You know, if you're <laughs> outside at a wedding or something and a stranger comes out and starts chatting to you, oh. you know... I'm going to chat to him for the length of this cigarette. Right. And when the cigarette burns down, I can just walk Go away. Because you're done. Uh, can you do that in any other social situation? We're just chatting to somebody and you immediately abruptly just go, all right, man, listen, I'm going to head off. Yeah. You can't. You have to wind it down slowly. Yeah. But a cigarette, you can just, as soon as you put it out, you're gone. And if it's a good conversation, you light another cigarette. Oh. They're amazing. I heard a story. I don't know if you ever heard this story. I think I may have told on the podcast before comedian from Canada was over at the Montreal Festival. He's living in the UK, but he went back to Canada. Yeah. I don't know which comedian it was, so I'm not going to name any comedian, right? Just say Joe Bloggs. But Eddie Izzard was at the festival. Yeah. And Eddie Izzard went outside for a for a smoke, right? So he thought, oh, I'll go out. I'll back. go out with him. Go out with him. Yeah. So he goes out, lights up the fag, turns around to Eddie and he's like, hey, how you doing? He's like, hey, how you doing? You know? And he's like, 30 seconds chatting to him. And obviously Eddie finishes a cigarette whatever and goes back in he goes cool and he looks down full cigarette oh. put out a full cigarette there you go and he didn't want to speak to him he didn't even he didn't even let the egg timer go down didn't even want to speak to him he just smashed he just that egg timer two puffs, puck it down I talk to this Oof. guy he looks down cigarette full how are you with people hugely famous hanging out with people or meeting them 
meeting them, going up to them. I don't do go up to go meet up famous to people. Ever fucking chat to somebody? I would never go up to a famous person, really, unless yeah. like, like. I've never It's never tra- worked You've never like I've never I'm trying to think Who Like comedy wise I yeah. don't see comedians as Famous So like Do you know what I mean Yeah so if you saw Tommy Chairman Oh chat I've chatted to him Yeah no yeah problem. yeah Hi, Tommy, nice Tommy's to very you. easy to approach Yeah and he's a good listener He is a good listener He's curious about people Yeah um, um, but in terms of like Are you talking like If I met a footballer Or a rugby player Or yeah, a musician somebody, or somebody like who would make you nervous Somebody who you're like I really want this person to like me Oh Jesus! Do you know what I? I recently, and I know you, you not not much into sports. Do you? No. Right. So you know Jamie Carragher at all? No. Former Liverpool defender, Sky Sports party. I was I was interviewed him for an hour at an event. No in England, way! And uh, we stuck in a lift or something? No, no, no. Like I was hosting <laughs> this uh, event, right? And uh, I had to interview him for an hour, and I was told that he had to be off stage a quarter to eight. He was the ta- the car was outside a quarter to eight. Sure. Right. And he was coming on a quarter past seven. So I had a half an hour with him. Mm-hmm. And I get to meet him about three minutes before. And he comes in. I'm like, hi, man. How's it going? And he, he'd re- I was just like, oh, fuck it. That's Jimmy Carragher. Like. And uh, I just went, uh, oh, I saw the, uh, I said, uh, he did a thing with Roy Keane down in Cork. And I went, oh, I saw you met Handsome Bob from Cove Ramblers, who I knew from Cork, right? Right. And he went, yeah, Handsome Bob. He goes, yeah, yeah. I said, I used to uh, do some gigs for the club to raise money for the, for the club. And he turned around and he goes, oh, yeah, it was a good crack down there. He goes, yeah, it was a good crack. Listen, I'd gone on there, so I'd call you on then. And I just left him. I just, like, yeah. had a quick, like, yeah. I was good. Yeah, oh, I yeah. saw that, like, five or six people asked. puts him at ease. Five or six people asked him for his photograph. I didn't ask him for his photograph. Yeah. He comes on, I goes, Asian gentlemen, this guy is a one-man club player. You all know who he is. Absolutely fantastic uh, guy and deserves a medal for putting up at Roy Keane most Monday nights on Monday Night Football or whatever, like, gets a bit of a laugh. And he comes on, he sits down. And I asked him no questions about his career. Yeah, I just went. So your son's a professional footballer now. How you how you like being a dad to a son to a okay, footballer? That's good. And then I did. And then he was like, he was like, oh yeah. He said like, you know, it's really difficult having my son in the house at the moment because he's injured, and like me and the wife, and he'd never talked about it before. That's why he enjoyed it, right? Yeah. And then at uh, ten past eight, he was still there, hmm. and I asked him questions that uh, I did my little research, and I went like, it's ever. So who is the best player you played with? Who is the What's your favourite type what, of football boot? What was, what, was, what was the game that you remember the most? Yeah, yeah, And I just yeah. turned out to him and I said, uh, I said to one question, I said, uh, if you were to do it all again, what would you change? You know, I was asking him stuff like that, right? Yeah. And he just went, fuck. And that's why he stayed, because I yeah. think he was getting, it. the he was audience getting were getting a different, yeah, yeah. They were a getting a different angle yeah. than the usual. So, because I went to see another one recently with somebody and uh, it was off, the person interviewing them was like, I was just, I felt like I was being robbed. Like, yeah. So, you enjoyed your career. <laughs> the guy's looking at the thing going, Yeah, I did. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, it was a long career, you know, 23 years. How and, did you get started in you know, football? And, 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 and who would you, you know, who would you, who would you be friends with now from the team? Right. And he'd be like, Oh, well, I'd see this person and that person, this person. Like, oh, friends, eh? Mad, isn't it? Jesus. And you're just like, and you're, and you're sitting there, you're going, oh, 40 quid? Yeah. For that's this? A, that's a rip Shit. Off. No, I'd I'd never. I don't think I've ever asked anyone for. I've for never asked that. anyone for. No. Oh, I've I've got one. Well, I've got one for this one. Do you know? Do you ever hear the band The Augustines? Not really. No. Right, American band, indie band, brilliant band. Went to see them live five or six times. William, this guy called uh, William is the lead singer. William McCarthy, the lead singer. I went. I drove from London to Manchester to see them live in the Academy. Drove up. Me and my friends went on the piss. Great night. Went to the kebab shop at one o'clock in the morning. He was in the queue at the kebab shop. Wow. And I went up and I went, all right, William. And he went, hey, man. And I went, great gig tonight. Good energy. I just went, great gig tonight. Yeah. Good energy. And he just went, cool, man. That was it. Fast forward four weeks later, I'm down in London. I'm going to see him again in Earl's Court. Right? Go to the gig. Brilliant night at the gig. A week after that gig, and I shit you not, I'm in a petrol station in Chiswick in West London. Guess who's buying a fucking Subway sandwich? <laughs> You've like, got the same diet as this right? lad. So I just went up to him and I looked at him and I, <laughs> you know, I just went up to him and I went, all right, William, saw you last week in Earl's Court. And he went, hey, man. He goes, very good. I just went to him. I did the most Irish thing ever. I went, very good. You do. You sound like a right? dad. You're like, I enjoyed it. No, it was good. Very good, right? <laughs> the band split up and they went solo. And he went, you. No, no. <laughs> he went, they went solo and he did a solo gig in Camden. And I went to it. And my agent, 
Christmas had bought me a beautiful bottle of Scotch whiskey. Lovely. I have no interest in Scotch whiskey. So do you know what I did? I brought the bottle of Scotch whiskey to the gig and I wrote a note and went to William from Andrew, have a great gig. He came out after about half an hour on stage, he pulled the whiskey up on stage, drank it, he goes, this guy Andrew gave it to me. There's about 300 people about the gig. 400 people go, hey. yeah, yeah. I just had the back going, oh jeez, we're friends now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, <laughs> left it like that. And then about six months later, he just started following me on Instagram. No way. So he now watches my stories. Wow. And I'm just like, you handled that well, I have to say. Do you see what I mean? You planted the seed of friendship. No, but I just went like, good stuff, man. Yeah. And I didn't annoy him. I didn't bugger him. I didn't fucking bugger him. Do you Sorry, know what? That's the, the wrong the, word. There was, <laughs> didn't, like, annoy him there was one, do you, you know David Cross? <laughs> this American yeah. comedian. Yeah. 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 So I was a massive fan of Mr. Show. Right. Like Mr. Show just created my sense of humor. It was so important to me. And when I started writing sketches, I was trying to write them like Mr. Show, you know? Yeah. And he did a gig, saw him do a gig in Vicar Street. They went to the Bren, bought him to the pub across the road. And he was there at the pub. And it was like a small pub, like wow. about 30 people there, if that, maybe 20. And I was like, I'm just going to go up, just going to play it cool. I'm just going to play it real cool. And uh, I was like, uh, David, how are you? Uh, listen, I just want to say... Wow. Uh, Mr. Show was just so uh, monumentally important to me. And Bren goes, uh, yeah, David, this is, uh, this is Kevin. Kevin's a comedian. comedian. And David goes, all oh, right, yeah, no, nice to meet you. And I was like, uh, and I just, I just want to say that. Anyway. And I just walked away and I just heard him like whisper something to Bren and they just went to a separate area <laughs> that nobody else could get into. Oh. I was like, ah, oh, man, you fucked that up. And that stayed with you all night, didn't that? Yeah. It's like, 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 I remember the first just, time I is met. There, is there somewhere we can go where assholes don't bother me? Yeah, yeah, we we'll just head over here, man. It was like the first time I met Ard Lohanlon. Strange because uh, obviously Father Ted was the first sitcom I ever watched, yeah. right? And uh, I met him, and I said I'm not going to mention anything to him. And I just went, "Hi, man, how's it going? I'm Andrew." And he shook my hand, and I just went, "How's your dad anyway?" <laughs> because his dad was the Keown Corley, you know, yeah. the Doyle, right? How's your dad anyway? Is he all right? And he went. Yeah, yeah, it's grand, yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Because my dad used to work a bit in the dial as well, like. And then I found out my dad and his dad used to hang out together. No way. So then, ever since then, completely fine, right? Never mentioned anything to him about anything he's ever done. Just purely talked to him about football, right? Yeah. And then one night I'm in London, and it's about 10 to 8, 5 to 8. And it's Monday night, I'll never forget it. And I look at my phone, and there's a voicemail. It didn't ring for mm. some reason. It's just, just this voicemail. I goes, hi Andrew, it's Ardell. Um, I'm just seeing are you close. Are you, are you nearby? Um, we're kicking off there in about five minutes, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I open my laptop. I look at my calendar. Day off. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm thinking, okay, 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 okay. Where Where are you at this point? I'm in East London. And where's the gig? The gig is about an hour away. Ooh. Right. And I'm going. No, 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 I haven't been booked for anything. Panic, panic. Right? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And I go through the emails, go through the emails, go, there's no way I'm That's the worst call the, in the world, the, isn't it? And, uh, See the, the call like, just wondering if you're close. And you have close. no fucking and idea like, what that's meant yeah. to mean. So the worst thing about nowadays is that if you get a message like that, you're like, I have to check, check my email, it's not on that. Check my Facebook, it's not on that. Check yeah. my Instagram, check my text, yeah. check my WhatsApp. You've got so many methods of fucking communication I've nowadays. I've booked, like. So I eventually find an email from one from my agent. Uh, Andrew, would you be up for doing an Irish fundraising? Now, you, Ashley and Bia and Ardell O'Hanlon on oh. Monday the 17th of whatever February it was. Uh, it's at blah, 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 Irish Centre in West London, blah, blah, blah. You're going to be on uh, 600 people in the crowd. Obviously, it's a fundraiser, but there is a little fee. Michael Lee Higgins is going to be there. Right. Shakira You know, Bono's going to be there, the whole lot, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, right? And I replied, yes, definitely, let me know. And she replied, well, of course, we'll go back to the bookers and let them know you're available. Uh, wait for more information. So it was never confirmed. Never confirmed. Right. So I ring Ardle back. This is about five past eight, ten past eight. Because I'm panicking. Is there any chance I can headline? I go, uh, hey, mate. Yeah, um, I genuinely don't know what this is. Um, I've, s I, I don't know. And he went, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Ashley and arrived early, so we've put her Should on. Be, yeah. And they've gone and sourced someone else. They got Daryl O'Brien to cover me. And I just went, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> they had the, the, the wake. fucking life. Oh. 
They had to wake Dara up. Be like, Dara, come on. Look, I know it's late. You make it out of bed. Fucking. I think Dara Breen came up. Wow. It's gone. And I was just like, of his bed. So then my the person who never came back to me, they went, oh, they were like, we have made a horrendous mistake. And I went, I'm fine with the mistake. But can you make sure Ardell knows yeah, 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 yeah. that this has fucking nothing to do yeah, with me? Yeah. Because I do not want anything to do with this. This I am an innocent victim in all of this. Right. That's tough. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah, they're the kind of things that we have nightmares about. Because, like, do you, like, did you, I remember, like, I used to have nightmares about, um, you know, you, you miss the bus home from school and then you lose your shoes and you, you get a lift, but the, the man drives you further away and you're hours away from home yeah. and you've no shoes and you lost yeah. your bag in the car yeah. and it's just anxiety dreams yeah but now and you're in the boot then no <laughs> now my anxiety dreams and he's are, throwing are like holy that. water over you like uh now my dreams are about like missing gigs or yeah. you're but, you're getting further away from a gig or something exactly yeah, my, my ones are like i fucking now i get more like house and like relationship orientated. Right. Right. I had a weird one the other night. Like a boiler busting or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Condensation what, or something, was it? Yeah. <laughs> where um, I had this fucking nightmare the other night where Nicole turns around to me and says, Oh, here, I saw we spot um, down in Banger on TikTok. You know, it looks nice for a wee lunch. And I'm like, Oh, you know what? I can't be fucked. Um, Racked was gigging last night. And He's like, oh, come on, like, make a most of the Saturday. And yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. And I get ready and I'm about to go. And she's like, oh, no, well, here, I need to bring my car as well because I have to go do something afterwards. So is, I'm, wait, I'm, this is a dream. This is a dream. Okay. A lot of admin in this dream. Yeah. She's like, I'll meet you down there. And I get down to Banger and she calls me. I, I said, I, I've just got here. I didn't see you, like, behind me there. And she's like, oh, no, I'm still getting ready here. But you know what? I'm not going to make it because, like, to go to something else afterwards. And then we have this, like, I'm going, like, what the fuck? You've got me up on this Saturday morning. You're down a banger. I'm like, I'm a banger here. What the fuck are you at? To be honest, so, that's the older you get, the weirder it becomes. That's not <laughs> that's that so bad. so domestic. You will get, you'll get, you'll get weirder dreams yeah. than that when uh, kids arrive. <laughs> Kevin, I could talk to you for quite a bit. Now you're on tour. Uh, you're just doing pure stand up at the moment, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's just yeah, what you're yeah. doing. So you're coming to Belfast. When are you coming to Belfast? I'll be here on April twentieth, I think, in the limelight. Very good. Uh, yeah, if Hitler's you are, birthday. If you're sorry. Hitler's birthday. Hitler's birthday. Yeah. And a great fitting tribute to him that night, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to be reenacting Outswitch. Um, um, yeah, 20th of April. Yeah, yeah. Kevin McGarren is a fantastic stand up comedian uh, from Cavan, living in Dublin uh, with his uh, family. <laughs> and he's he's doing all the family things there. Uh, and he's coming to Belfast to do a show online. I highly recommend you. It's really nice to actually get to know Kevin a bit more and actually just have a really nice conversation with him. Uh, nothing too stressful. I think I think what we can safely say that was a nice that was a nice chat. Yeah, we didn't blow it out of the water, but yet we left enough there for you to think. You know what? He could be good to come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I left I, I left some on the table. <laughs> I left some on the table. Yeah. yeah, I probably didn't pick it up. I didn't tap it in. <laughs> but uh, listen, I highly recommend going and see Kevin. Follow him on all his socials. What's your Instagram, Kevin? Just Kevin underscore McGarren on Instagram. Kevin, we'll have we'll have a link um, here at the bottom of the actual YouTube video as well, and we put it up on the Spotify as well. Um, but it's always good to see comedians coming up to Belfast because there's a thriving comedy scene here and people from all over this island want to come up and perform here. But they're only going to keep doing that if people like you go out and actually watch people you've never seen before or you've seen clips of. Go and actually enjoy them and watch the show. Who's opening for you? Eddie Malarkey. Yes. Yeah. He's a lovely fella. He's great. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie's a lovely funny. fella. Really good. He's still got a Spanish girlfriend. I don't know. Right. I never ask comedians about their personal lives. Oh, do you not? No. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's not a good trait. I don't, I, you know, like, how are you? That's about the height of it. Right. You're very surface level. You're very... Very sur- I ask yeah. them about, I ask them about stupid bullshit. Yeah. I go into deep, deep chat. I don't go into like the... So, um, how's your relationship? I don't care. I want to know like... I don't really care. fixed red mark? Like, yeah. You know, like, how's your dad's pension? What's he getting? I go straight into Israel Palestine. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, which side do you want? Because I'm on nobody's side. <laughs> um, Cork and our followers, please do don't forget to die in pub. They sponsor us, Cork 25. I love your description of that pub was as if you'd never been to a pub in your life. You're like, they have floors, there's windows. You pay a man and he brings you beer. 
I don't want him to leave him. <laughs> They'll cook the dinner for you. You just tell him what you want. <laughs> he has a list of stuff, of all the stuff he's able to make, and you just pick it. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. Go and see Kevin when he's up at uh, Belfast. And he's also uh, uh, he's a great guest to have on. Kevin McGarren, thanks for much for coming on Andrew, Cork of the North. Thank you so much, man. Thanks it was a pleasure. Man.